Um, so uh, my name is Herbe Duval. I'm a PhD <laughs> student working at the University of Rennes in France. Uh, but I spend most of my time on a fortified site located in coastal and insular context all around uh, Britain. I'm very glad to continue this tour of efforts at the age of Europe, where we now heading to the western part of Brittany, more precisely around the site of Camarvani, the French city of Brest. Now, for those who are not yet familiar with this part of France, uh, the site is located in the western part uh, of Brittany, over there. Um, Camarvani is a wild uh, peninsula of 60 acres, and its central part measures 500 uh, meters in perimeter, linked to the rest of the interland, uh, thanks to a narrow passage which had been fortified uh, during uh, different times. You also see in this picture the natural port of uh, Le Conquet, up there, still used as a place of release for boats, and the Blanc Salon uh, Beach, which is one of the largest of all the coastline uh, nearby and contrasting with the height cliff that you see uh, extending to the north. On this topographic plan, you have a view of most of the remains. Uh, I should precise that the peninsula has a complex chronology of occupation going from the Neolithic to the contemporary times, with a lot of archaeological finds for each period of time. Um, due to its complex chronology, a few have been said about its protohistoric remains and fortification, because you guess that um, they have been considerably destroyed and reworked through time. Camarvan has fortified remains located in two spots, in the north, uh, over there, in order to isolate the small islands, and uh, in the south, uh, there, to control the entrance from the isthmus. Now, I won't talk a lot about the north part, because I will still miss some information, uh, but so far the remains could be uh, dating maybe from the final Neolithic period. So, uh, back to the isthmus, the fortified remains are, as you see, quite visible and as visible as the stratification is complex. Um, so this is the actual view of the bank blocking the access to the peninsula and, as you see, it is quite massive, uh, 65 meters long, nearly uh, 20 meters wide and more than 2 meters height in average. But as we will see, fortification are <coughs> among those with the most reworked state possible. Uh, if we go some decades earlier, you see that two uh, blocos were constructed uh, during the World War II, within the structure, and that survey destroyed a large part of the protohistoric fortification where pottery shells were found before the war. The position was used uh, during the war to have a viewpoint of the surroundings and, of course, controlling uh, access to the peninsula in the course of the Third Reich uh, Atlantic Swall project. Um, fully, we are lucky enough to have maps and drawings made between the end of the medieval and modern period because Le Conquet uh, was a famous harbor uh, for cartographers. And all those maps have plenty of interesting information, but here uh, I will only uh, show a focus on the emplacement of the fortification. So, as you see, over the time, a uh, modern fort has been built, uh, as well as a guard house, indicating Carl de Garde on the map, and all of them were constructed to protect the entrance uh, of the album. What I want to show is the mention of a medieval uh, mud that existed even before the modern uh, period of falsification and called there uh, la mode du château, which is also visible on this uh, drawing. The presence of uh, medieval mud at uh, this emplacement is a situation quite unusual in Brittany, where uh, most of the mud are constructed in the extremity of uh, the promontories. The only other example of form uh, shares a lot of similarities with Carmarvon. Uh, it is also from a coastal site in Ensola context, where a feudal mud uh, were constructed on the top here of the protohistoric rampage deity from the Iron Age. Uh, you can also uh, note the presence of natural <coughs> ports near the site. So, in both cases, uh, the mud took advantage of the protohistoric fortification in order to control the surrounding area. All those historic states of fortification uh, constitute real issues to study the protohistoric ramparts. Uh, so, the actual uh, topographic uh, profile, which is top of the screenshot, the result 
of the reworked state uh, I just presented you. And we must focus on the part subject to erosion in order to understand the ancient architecture. So it's more like this profile, uh, which is possible to um, study in two parts. Uh, the first one is about uh, where uh, there is an actual hiking uh, trail in the mass of the rampart, and the erosion makes it possible to study the internal structure uh, made of dry stone and some alignment probably corresponding to the external uh, facing of the defensive wall. Therefore, there was no archaeological material found at this location during our last survey. The second spot is located directly uh, on the cliff, still subject to strong uh, maritime erosion. Um, there are a few uh, petrisha from Bronze or Iron, Iron Age were found at this location and the stratigraphy show the early stage uh, of the ramparts, uh, as well as what could be maybe uh, the external facing of the defensive wall still made of dry stone stabs conserved in at least four cores of stone. Now, um, the site of the Châtelet located in New Deer share the exact same situation, and it was uncovered during a survey on the island directed in the course of the collective research uh, project led by Thomas Vigneau. And this wild promontory, as you see, is also blocked by a large rampart dated from the end of the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. On the western part, this one, uh, well, an important degree of erosion um, reveal remains of the fortification. So, as you see in this uh, photogrammetric uh, model, we have uh, the bank, and uh, thanks to the erosion, um, you see the remains appearing. Um, at least one meter below the hiking, the, hiking, the actual sorry, hiking trail, and showing a uh, different state uh, of fortification. So the situation is uh, quite uh, similar. Uh, sorry, Let's just uh, <coughs> back to the presentation. Um, uh, so now that I'm done with the fortified remains, I shall uh, focus on the coastal environment near the site. Uh, the French department is from is called Finister, which literally means the end of the earth, as is the land end of Western Cornwall or in England, or the Cape of Finister in the northern Spain. The term seems to fit uh, with this part of Britain and also with the emplacement of our archaeological sites. But as you see on the screen, there are uh, plenty of uh, isles uh, that form the archipelago of Molen, and also the second largest uh, island of Brittany called Wesson. Now for the uh, sailor or seamen of prehistoric time, the real age of the known world is represented by those islands that were densely occupied between the end of the Bronze Age and the beginning of the Iron Age. Another characteristic uh, of this particular seascape lies in its emplacement between the Channel Sea and the Celtic Sea or Iroise Sea. So in other words, it is an obligatory uh, element of passage for ships aiming for the <coughs> Gulf of Gulf or Mediterranean Sea on one side, or England Ireland, or even Northern France on the other side, not to uh, mention the um, Anglo uh, Anglo Island. Uh, since the protohistoric times until now, the maritime rules followed by the coastal ships did not change much, depending on the maritime condition, whether in currents, only pre roads could be taken. The most dangerous one is uh, this one, the Fromberg Passage, uh, subject to strong currents and amplified by the wind forces. So in order to go in off the island of Wesson, the fastest and safest roads are the channel of La Helle and Le Four. Uh, it also has the advantage to fit with the habits of coasters, whether it is for fishing or trade purposes. Moreover, taking these uh, roads instead of the Fumber Passage can easily reduce the day of travel by sea to one or two. For all those reasons, the Ford Channel is a maritime road of great importance. Here on the screen, you see the uh, map from the 18th century indicating the coastal environment near the site of Carnarvon. But either, even with favorable uh, current, it's still dangerous due to the presence of heads of rocks and islets along all along the channel, and it can, it can require for ships to stay at the entrance of estuaries, uh, natural ports, or stranded areas to wait for better sandy condition. 
And this is uh, exactly what is interesting about the site of Clermont, which is the largest and widest peninsula all along the channel and has a particularity to dispose of natural ports, as we saw, as well as beach that could be used as boat stream areas. Now, a quick review of the archaeological data recognize uh, near the four channels put the light in a complex seascape during the Bronze and Iron Age. Um, for the Bronze Age on the left on the screen, uh, there are a lot of burial remains, sometimes issues associated with occupation, showing uh, coastline densely occupied and organized around settlements, mostly turned toward the sea, but not separated from the rest of the economy of the continent. Uh, on the contrary, well integrated. This is the case for uh, Molen, recently studied by events by teams, but also for the more known uh, site of Mesnotario in Oessan, where a village from uh, Bronze to Iron Age, uh, First Iron Age, were uh, excavated for years by Jean Paul Le Lyon, delivering a picture of an island enriched by uh, importation. During the Iron Age, uh, right on the screen, less are known from funeral remains. Uh, and the occupation seems to be less numerous. However, new activities like sad boiler, boiler workshops complete a maritime economy turn toward the sea, uh, taking full advantage of the relation with the Mediterranean wars already settled during the Bronze Age, but now complete with Rome's influence. The fortified sites are also uh, more numerous. Uh, what is interesting to take into consideration in the is the evolution of the site due uh, to the variation of the sea level. Uh, the accessibility has involved turning the site into a naturally fortified peninsula with a high strategic aspect due to the fact I just presented here. Here on the 3D model, um, it is generated by uh, LiDAR data from the environment of Camarvon. You see the thin uh, isthmus uh, connecting to connected the site sorry, to the rest of the interland as well as the remain from the fortification. Uh, those data allow sea level simulation based on topography and marine transgression information. The thing were um, quite different during the Neolithic, as you see in the upper part of the screen, where the site was not yet a peninsula. We believe that it is what will explain the presence of uh, numerous uh, <coughs> Neolithic structure as well as the fortified remains on the uh, top part of the site. Comparable at some architecture embankment know for Brittany for the final Neolithic. Uh, the situation became slightly different the, during the proto-history, where sea level turned the site into the actual uh, peninsula. Then the access could easily be blocked by your rampart in order to complete the natural defense of the site and taking advantage of this new strategically placed controlling the channel of uh, the fool. And but on the screen, I could not resist uh, to show what the site will become in the future at the bottom of the screen to remind the consequences of the rise of the sea level. But this is also a transition to illustrate the interest of protohistoric population from the Iron Age in the following case, for islets near the coastal lines. As you see uh, in this site, York, um, the north, which is north of uh, Camarvon, as you see, uh, ramparts were built in order to isolate an entire uh, island from the rest of the territory. Thanks to the tide, uh, the site could be reached twice a day, and now with the rise of the sea level, the yacht can only be reached by boats. Uh, the situation is not in any case, and uh, at least two other examples are now in the north uh, parts of Britain. To conclude uh, in a few words, uh, I wish to present for the site of Carmarvon a system that seemed to repeat on different insular and coastal sites all around the Atlantic shore. And of course, I will require, it will require sorry, a much more precise picture by integrating all the sites from the northwest of France, but also those from Ireland, England, and the Channel Islands. And the goal was also to go beyond the fortified remains to initiate a talk around uh, those particularly sites. The pan uh, between Hillfort and Hillfort in French, which mean uh, fortified highlands, were made to compare sites completely similar but with a maritime environment that played the main role on the decision to occupy those strategically places. Uh, if the remains from the Bronze Age are not as numerous as the one from the Iron Age for the study area, we see through the protohistoric time the necessity to occupy and control areas for both economical and political reasons. 
the topography seems to co to respond to several interests for the local population, which saw through the sea a favorable way to interact with other communities and maybe gain influence. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention.